Cruise news time. And look, we got traditions in cruising. And sometimes when those traditions get messed with, it, it causes a reaction. Well, uh, normally in cruising, the biggest only does it once a week. But now we got one of the world's biggest doing it twice a week. And I don't know how I feel about it. Well, I, I think I'm excited about it. Plus, we have a Carnival cruise ship returning to its previous glory. We also have what's considered by some, I don't know who, the most popular Disney attraction making its way onto a cruise ship. And uh, how about this scenario? Imagine, if you will, sleeping in a dark interior cabin, and all of a sudden you are awakened to water flooding in on top of you. Would you think you are uh, needing to find a life jacket? I think maybe you would. Scary stuff. I've had a similar experience. I got to break it down. This just happened to a couple uh, last month. Cruise news and my views. Let's talk about it. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to La Little Loca. I'm your host, Tony, here with the latest cruise news and views. For your face, for your face, it's Thursday, the 26th of October, 2023, and we got some doozy cruise news stories for you today. Let's just jump right into it. Cruise news story number one. Like I said in the intro, most of the time, the big ones only do it once a week, but now one of the world's biggest is doing it twice a week. The Allure of the Seas, one of the world's largest cruise ships, holds 68 100 passengers will now be cruising from Port Canaveral two days a week. Go out on Mondays and on Fridays. And you know who's excited? Well, people who like short cruises on big cruise ships and Port Canaveral. Port Canaveral is trying to make it as workable as possible. They're adding a thousand new parking slots to the Royal Parking Area, and they're making money over there. They've just hit a new record, $190 million in revenue last year. And guess how much of that $190 million was from people parking? $41 million. Can you imagine that? $41 million for just having some lines painted on concrete where people can slide their sedan in while they're on their cruise vacation. I really like what Royal Caribbean is doing here, giving a cool opportunity to people who like to go on short cruises, being able to do it on some of the best cruise hardware in the world, some of the best cruise experience in the world. I kind of like that idea of popping up on a Monday morning, going over to Port Canaveral, jumping on a cruise ship for a few days, and then coming back to life as we know it. Let me kick it over to you. How do you feel about the short cruise? Do you only do long cruises? Do you like this option? Would this be a way for you to try one of these mega ships, leave a comment below. Cruise news story number two, and we've got excellent news for the Carnival Freedom. You may remember the tragic situation she found herself in last year when her iconic whale tail funnel caught on fire and burned away. It was replaced with a straight stack funnel and it's looked a little bit out of sorts. Well, excitingly, she just went into dry dock and she had a bunch of improvements done to her. And one of those was setting all things right in the world of carnival cruising by putting her iconic whale tail back in place. Of course, the downside for all of us would be ship spotters is that the Carnival Freedom used to be really easy to spot with that janky smokestack. And now with her new restored whale tail in place, We'll have to look a little closer to understand which ship belongs to the whale tail that we see. I personally am a fan of the aesthetic of the whale tail. I do think it's iconic, and I'm glad that it has been returned, returned to the Carnival Freedom. Cruise news story number three, details continue to be revealed about the new upcoming Disney cruise ship, the Disney Treasure. And the latest tidbit that's made its way out into the world is that the treasure will feature a bar themed after what is considered by many the most popular Disney attraction. Do you have in your mind what the most popular Disney attraction may be? Well, of course, it's the Haunted Mansion. And now there will be a Haunted Mansion theme bar on the Disney treasure. I don't even know what the Haunted Mansion is. Is that the same thing as Tower of Terror? What is the one where you ride and at the end a ghost shows up beside you in a mirror? Is that the Haunted Mansion? If so, I have been on that ride. The last time I went to Disney World was in 1984 when I was 13 years old. And so when I think of what my favorite Disney attraction is, it continues to be the Hall of Presidents. 
Because, yeah, I'm a nerd. But, yeah, Hall of Presidents, my favorite Disney attraction, at least from Disney World. I did ride Tron when I went to Shanghai Disney in China with my friend Don. We rode Tron, which is a pretty cool roller coaster. But I still would have picked Hall of Presidents over Tron. Uh, let me ask you this, Disney fans out there. Is Haunted Mansion the best Disney attraction? Or is it something else? Leave a comment below. Now, I got to tell you about this couple that was unexpectedly awakened by water rushing into their dark interior cabin. But before I do that, let me give a quick shout out to Bogan Painter 1638 who I believe was the first person to correctly identify the cruise ports yesterday as Quebec City, Cabo San Lucas, and New York City. New York City? I think this is the second time the Bogan Painter has been the first person, but congratulations, way to identify those cruise ports. I have a fresh set of three cruise ports coming at you at the end of the show if you want to try to put your guests in. And I'd also like to take a quick moment to invite you to subscribe. I got a special guest coming up, so I'm trying to get all the admin stuff out of the way. Uh, I would like to take a moment to invite you to subscribe if you like staying up to date with everything going on in cruising please consider subscribing with the notification bell on for the simple reason that YouTube will send you a notification. That way you can be one of the first people to guess the three cruise ports and you'll be uh, in the know when it comes to the cruise news for your face. Thank you in advance. All right, here's the story. This happened last month on the Carnival Radiance. It's getting a lot of attention right now because the person that it happened to posted this video, this video on TikTok. <laughs> So as you can see in that video, you have a corridor of a cruise ship with water flooding into it. She went on to post a subsequent video showing her darkened cabin that had lost power that was completely flooded, all of her personal possessions flooded. And basically what you can put together from these two videos is that she was asleep and she woke to the sound of rushing water, water rushing in on top of her inside her cabin. And as you can imagine, that was probably pretty unsettling. She did go out into the corridor and noticed that there was flooding and leaking in the corridor. Of course, crew members came in, started to clean it up, and they were notified that a pipe had burst uh, you know, unfortunately, right above their room. A similar thing happened to us when we were staying in an interior cabin on the Carnival Elation. A little different scenario, we tend to stay out later. So we came back to our cabin where water was flooding into our cabin. For this part of the story, I think I'll bring in, I'll bring in some help. I've got a special guest today. Everybody's special guest, Jenny B. What's going on? So like I was saying, we had an experience very similar to this mm -hmm. where our cabin flooded. I think it was like one or two o'clock in the morning. But it wasn't as traumatic, I would say, for us because we weren't in the cabin when it started flooding. Right, but when we did get back, it was a little traumatic seeing our stuff, you know. I think that's probably the most challenging thing. The lady made a subsequent video showing the inside of her cabin and everything, they had a lot of stuff flooded, right? So this is the thing that really you start to freak out about, like where it was flooding in our cabin, it was going like right on some of my camera gear. Right. I guess it's common enough to where just because you have some flooding on a cruise ship, you, you're you not going to think that the ship's going to sink. But I would say for the new cruiser or the uninitiated, it could be a moment where you're pretty concerned. Well, especially if you wake up in the middle of a good sleep and there's water dripping on you, you may think that. The other thing that I was going to bring up, and I'm glad you're here, uh, I want to show you this. So one of the articles that I read was uh, written by a reporter in New Zealand. Uh -huh. And so uh, maybe just read this line right here and tell me what you think. A passenger on board a luxury cruise has captured the moment the ship began to flood through the ceilings in what one has described as absolutely terrifying. Now, I'm not trying to discount the absolutely terrifying part, but the thing that caught me, you know, this is the Carnival Radiance. The first line. Luxury? <laughs> I just wanted to see if it was just me, but now Jenny B got no, it too. I, I was thinking that when I was reading it. I'm like, didn't you say this was a carnival? Look, it, it, to be fair, anytime you get to take a cruise, it is like a first world luxury kind of thing. Absolutely. But for, for us who cruise a lot and we're in the business, and, and no shade on it, we've cruised in a lot of interior carnival cabins. But it just uh, I thought it was funny that it was referred to as a luxury cruise. Plus, we have a niece that's always talking about going on a luxury cruise. So it made me so think sweet. about that. But, uh, well, there you go. That's the insight from the 
lovely Jenny B. Thank you so much for joining me on today's episode. Well, thank you for having me, Anthony. Everybody, everybody else. golf clap. Bye. Ooh, I love it when Jenny B. stops by because, well, I get to see Jenny B. And she usually has lunch, so uh, how about that? But no, uh, yeah, what would, you, what would you think if you were awoken in the middle of the night with water rushing into your cabin? Hopefully, maybe you've seen enough of these stories that you wouldn't panic and think that the ship is sinking. But I'm, I'm sure many people would. And, of course, you could see from that New Zealand article that uh, they, they likened it to the Titanic. Have you ever had an experience like this? Leave a comment below. Some wild stories today, but I am thankful that I was able to bring them to you, which brings us to the part of the show where we talk about what we're thankful for. So, of course, I'm thankful that I got to bring those to you. But let's have our moment of gratitude. I would challenge you, clear your mind. And what's the first thing that pops into your head that you are thankful for? Uh, think about that for a few seconds. Be thankful for that. I'll tell you something that I am thankful for. I am thankful for when things work out easily. We've had some interesting opportunities in our lives over the last few weeks, and most of them have worked out easily. Jenny B was out and about on the town taking care of some business today because of one of those easy working situations. And uh, yeah, so uh, I'm thankful that sometimes things that are hard that could be challenging, I'm thankful when they work out easily. What are you thankful for today? I leave a comment below. And now, if you dare, see if you can guess these three cruise ports. This is Tony B for La Lido Loca. And until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye.